I'm always out of breath for some reason when I film these videos and I don't know why because I'm literally just sitting here. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Alicia. Welcome to the family. Today I'll be going over my November wrap up. November was a weird month for me and after watching a couple of other people's videos it feels like it was a weird month for everybody. I think it's just because it's near the end of the year and you know we all need a break. It's been quite a tough year so understandably so it's been a little bit hard for everybody so i'm just hoping to start 2021 with a fresh mindset before we get into the video i do quickly want to go over my stats so in the month of november i did read a total of nine books i had a one three star book one 3.5 star book four four star books one 4.5 star book and two five star books so overall I had a pretty good reading month even though during the month of November it didn't feel like a good reading month. In terms of genre breakdown, I did read three fantasy, three science fiction, one nonfiction, one gothic horror, and one... <sighs> you know, this one could actually also be a sci-fi book. Um, or it can be a literary fiction, or it can be magical realism. It kind of spans all of those genres. Um, but I'll talk a little bit more about this specific book later on. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Where shall we begin? I did speak about four of these books during a mid-month check-in sometime in November. So I'll just briefly go over the four books and link that video up in the cards in case you want a more in-depth analysis. And then I'll just talk about the new books after. The first book that I finished in the month of November, which is included in the other video, is Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roenhorst. I did give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. Trail of Lightning is a dystopian fantasy novel. It is the first book to the Six World series and in it we do follow our main character Maggie. She is a monster hunter and at the beginning of the book she is contracted to save this little girl who has been kidnapped by one of these monsters. Maggie sets out to find this little girl and realizes that these monsters are a little different. They move a little bit faster and they're harder to kill. So after that she does go on a quest with the medicine man to find out who is creating these monsters. This is set in Dinatal, which is the former Navajo reservation, and it's quite a great read. I really enjoyed it, and I will be continuing on with the series in 2021. The next book that I did finish in the month of November is Mexican Gothic. Hello. Hi, hi. Do you want to be in the video? Yeah? Mm, hi. Okay, you can be in the video. Let's just move this a little bit. Here we go. All right. Mexican Gothic is a gothic horror novel set in 1950s Mexico. In the story, we follow our main character, Noemi, after she receives a worrisome letter from her cousin, Catalina. Catalina had recently married this blue-eyed European dude who comes from a prominent mining family. Noemi ends up going on a quest to the countryside to find out what is going on with her cousin, and there she starts to unravel the history behind this prominent family. This is a very slow-burning gothic novel, and it's one where suspense is slowly built but packs a punch at the end. The next book that I finished in the month of November was The Land Becomes a River by Francisco Cantu. The Land Becomes a River was my nonfiction read for the month of November and I did give it a 5 out of 5 stars. In this we follow Francisco Cantu as he is a border patrol agent on the US-Mexican border and he talks about the plight of immigrants but also gives insight into the lives of border patrol agents. So if you're someone who's curious to learn more about this topic, this is one that I do heavily recommend. Last book that I read in the month of November that was included in that earlier video is Binti Home. This is the second installment to the Binti novella series and I did give that book a 4 out of 5 stars. And with that, I'll move into the books that I read in November that I haven't yet talked about. The 
next book that I finished in the month of November was Binti Night Masquerade and this is the third installment to the Binti series. I only ended up giving the third novella a three out of five stars. It was still good but I didn't love it as much as I loved the first and second novella. Overall I would give the whole series a four out of five. It's a solid read. It's a great sci-fi space opera that's very introspective and character driven. The reason that I gave the third novella a 3 out of 5 stars is because there were a lot of jumps in the narrative that just felt very confusing to me and came off a little bit jarring and it did take me away from the read. But overall, I think it was a good, solid ending. I didn't love the ending, but I, I see why it had to end that way. I'm really excited to see what Nettie Okorafor comes out with in the future and she's definitely an author that I want to follow. I don't want to give too much of the synopsis of the second and third novellas just because it is a very short series. This is a very character driven novella series and it is very introspective. It's slow moving, slow burning. There are action scenes and the action scenes can be quite brutal but I really like that the effects of these types of scenes are really explored in the narrative. Uh, so overall, I would recommend this series. The next book that I read in the month of November is Black Sun by Rebecca Ruenhorst. I also have a dedicated review entirely for this, so I'll just briefly go over it. But this is the first installment to a new series by Rebecca Ruenhorst. Black Sun is set during pre-Columbian times and we do follow four separate points of views. All of these points of views are on track to convert during this big annual event. It is a winter solstice. However, this event does coincide with a solar eclipse, which is said to bring chaos to the world. I did end up giving this book a 5 out of 5. It was fantastic. And if you do want any more in-depth thoughts, please do click on that video. I will go ahead and link it in the cards. The next book that I finished in the month of November is The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. This is a translated work and this is the one that I had a little bit trouble classifying. It is bordering sci-fi literary fiction and has elements of magical realism in it. The Memory Police is not your usual dystopian novel. It is a quiet type of book. It's very serene and very slow burning. We're following our main character. She is a novelist and she resides on an island where a lot of objects are disappearing. People's attachment and memories to these particular objects that are disappearing have also vanished and with it they start to kind of lose their sense of self. There are people on the island who do not forget these items and we do have a force called the memory police that seeks to find these people, remove them, and also remove any objects that still remain that should have disappeared. In our story, we do follow our novelist who remains unnamed throughout the entire book as she tries to hide her editor, who is one of these people who doesn't forget. Overall, I really enjoyed it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I thought the themes in here were quite well realized and I find it, I found it to be a very hypnotic novel. It's more of a self and personal apocalypse that is going on and this sense of losing your identity and losing who you are. It really does explore what happens when we lose our memories and what the consequences of that might be, not just for us but for society. So I find I found it quite intriguing. I don't I didn't really like the end. Um, it was left kind of up in the air. But overall, I really enjoyed it. But if you like more quiet, serene novels that are thematically based, then I think you'll really enjoy this one. Coffee break. Chic? Yes, yes, good girl. We're still teaching her how to shake. Okay, so the next book that I finished in the month of November was my very first Cosmere book and it was Mistborn the Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. I did give it a 4 out of 5. Before you come at me, I now know what the hype is all about. I understand why Brandon Sanderson is loved. His world building is out of this world, literally out of this world. His character development is so good. 
all of his characters are extremely nuanced. Vin has now become one of my favorite characters ever. The magic system is so unique and intriguing and I, I loved it. The only reason I, I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars is because it wasn't an impulsive read for me. It wasn't, it was a story that I was definitely interested in and I wanted to come back to it, but it wasn't one that kept me at the edge of my seat and I just had to know what happened next. Um, so that was the only reason, but overall Sanderson's writing style is super digestible, very simple and really easy to digest. In case you don't know what Mistborn is about, Brandon Sanderson answers the question of what happens if the evil overlord were to win, what would the world look like? And so this is where our story begins. We are following a team of ragtag individuals, thieves of your common sort, who are trying to overthrow the final empire years after the bad guy has been in power. Our magic system is based on allomancy. We have people who are able to ingest metals and burn them in order to gain superhuman abilities. Super great story. It's so creative and I loved every second of it. I'm excited to continue this series next year and eventually get to the Stormlight Archives. The last book that I finished in the month of November is The Original and this is by Brandon Sanderson and Mary Robinick Kowal. It is narrated by Julia Whelan, or Whelan, 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 something like that. This is an audiobook exclusive format thus far. I do believe they are working on getting it into a different format, but for now it is audiobook only. And I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. The original is a science fiction thriller slash mystery. This novella is set in a futuristic world where essentially nanites are able to tap into your user preferences and alter your perception of reality. For example, if you were to go into Starbucks, but you don't like the theme that is set in that particular Starbucks, your nanites are able to adjust that into a preference that would be more suitable to you based on your history. So in this world, we follow our main character, Holly, who has just woken up at a hospital. She is a clone of her original, and her clone has been accused of killing their husband. Holly is tasked with the mission to find her original and kill her. And from there, our story continues. It is super fast-paced, super engaging. I really, really liked it. This is an action-packed novella, and I was here for it. Don't go into it expecting Sanderson's in-depth world-building or character development, as this is a pretty short novella. It's only three hours long. However, if you want an action-packed, thrilling, and suspenseful read, this is one for the books. For those of you out there who don't love thrillers or horror because they tend to be a little bit scary, this is not scary at all. It's just thrilling. You, you're on for a ride. Those were all the books that I read in the month of November. I know this video is up very late for a November wrap up, so let me know down below what you're currently reading. I actually just finished this last night. I have to update it. I'm just starting Pet Cemetery today. It's a book that I DNF'd earlier this year and we'll see if I like it more this second time around. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye!